Well, thank you very much, uh, you Ted me. Kennedy. I really look forward to the conversation here and drawing you out as Barack Obama since you're his surrogate, right? <laughs> so, doesn't get better than that. At least it's not an empty chair. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but but we, we, should, we should talk about uh, some of what you said um, and, and drill into some of it a little bit. And let me challenge you on a few things. Let's start on the very serious issue of employment and employment security for the disability community. President Obama uh, introduced an employment bill uh, on Capitol Hill that did not contain any special provision for people with disabilities. I've spoken to people in the disabilities community about this, and they've expressed concern about that. If reelected, what would he do? And would he explicitly include something in a, in a disability or an employment initiative to improve the economic and employment prospects of people in the disabilities community who wish to work? Well, I thank you, uh, Frank. I would say that on, in the issue of jobs and employment of people with disabilities, President Obama has done an amazing job. Okay, we know that this is a tough problem. I served on the President's Committee on Employment of People with Disabilities as a Reagan appointee. Okay, some people are surprised by that, but I think my point is, is that this is an area where people with di from different political parties can all agree. Okay, we all want to make sure that people with disabilities, uh, they, we know that people dis with disabilities do not want a handout, they want a job. They w people want to become productive, tax-paying citizens. I would respond specifically to your questions in, in a couple of ways. One is President Obama, on marking the 20th anniversary of the ADA, signed an executive order to all federal agencies to recruit and hire an additional 100,000 people with disabilities across the federal government. Yeah. And we're well on our way, we're well on our way to meeting that goal. Secondly, he established a, pro a program called Add Us In at the Department of Labor that has developed innovative strategies to increase employment for people with disabilities in small business. He has strengthened anti-disability uh, anti uh, disc and discrimination enforcement, even in this tough economic times at the EEOC. He's expanded the number of staff people investigating ADA claims at the EEOC. He's established a wounded warrior tax credit nearly $10,000 per uh, service member, gives businesses high, uh, a tax break, $10,000 per veteran for a, for a service-related injury. Finally, and most importantly, President ba Obama has proposed that uh, new, tough new standards through Section 503 that will require companies with federal contracts have a goal of uh, creating a workforce compri comprised of at least 7% people with disabilities. It's done for people of color, it's done for women, and President Obama believes that it should be done for people with disabilities as well. You mentioned, you mentioned the, the Wounded Warrior Project. Should that type of initiative, tax credits for, for, for people with disabilities, be extended more broadly in the workplace? Well, well sure. I think, I think that you give, in addition to the programs that I've mentioned, tax credits, targeted tax credits, things like uh, 503 to encourage federal contractors who get government uh, contracts to hire more people with disabilities, sure, okay? But I also think it's working with business as well. That's something that I think we need, we need to do. And I think the government knows that there's only really so much that it can, it can do on its own. It, we need to engage the business community. And, and I think that we've done a very good job at doing that in terms of job training. President Obama knows that people with disabilities want to be, we're the only group out there that wants to pay more in taxes. Am I not right? <laughs> and, and, and people, employers know that, that people with disabilities make incredible employees. Let me just give you one story of a gentleman that I met in Pittsburgh. His name is Jamie. He works for Highmark, which is a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan 
in Pittsburgh. And Jamie has a severe disability. He was born with cerebral palsy, he uses a wheelchair. And he had to go to the doctors in the middle of the day and his wheelchair broke. But you know what, he wanted to go to back to work so badly that he called an ambulance and, and had the ambulance bring him back to Highmark. Well, the CEO of Highmark has said, you know what, in my 20 or 30 years, I've seen a lot of people leave the head, my corporate headquarters in a stretcher. I have never seen anyone come to work in a stretcher. And that tells the story of how much people with disabilities want to work, okay? We don't want to sit at home and, and receive a check. We want to go back to work. We don't want to have to tr trigger the loss of, our, uh, of health benefits. We want to become productive members of society, and that's just the kind of society that President Obama wants to be. Let me move you to another aspect of what you talked about, and certainly the, something that's very, very much in the center of the debate with respect to disabilities in the presidential campaign, and that's the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Um, a, good, a very important question, it would seem to me, for President Obama, uh, uh, who's trying for this next term, would be in a next term if he were reelected. He will face uh, a very challenging uh, cha uh, problem, it would seem, in the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, because many states are saying we're not going there or they're viewing things differently. Uh, there are disagreements. Other states want to repeal it flat out. How would he and his administration, in your view, uh, promote the implementation of that act and make sure that uh, there is uniformity, uh, working with states, many of which disagree fundamentally, profoundly with the whole uh, direction of that act? Well, um, l uh, let me just say that I think even states that have said we are going to wait and see, we're going to wait and see what happens after the presidential election before we invest a lot of our resources in developing an exchange. Um, even they are behind the scenes creating the, 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 ar the central arc. A lot of them, but not all of them. Uh, Certainly not all of them. Well, sir, uh, maybe not all of them, but the, the default is that the federal government, don't forget, if the states like Texas and Louisiana do not want to uh, provide their own exchange, well, guess what? The federal government is going to go in there and provide an exchange in their stead, okay? So I, I think that we know, Frank, um, that implementation is going to be um, an ongoing, that uh, the, the problems that we're going to encounter, we, we are going to be, um, we, we're going to need the input from a lot of different healthcare policy experts, okay? But the point is, is that we have a, a, a system where the government can set the standards, but the healthcare is actually going to be implemented by private companies, uh, uh, like uh, Part D of the Medicare uh, program. So to respond to your question, the federal government is, is at HHS right now, we are setting up contingency plans for states who, choose, who may choose not to, to develop their own exchanges. Let me turn to another issue that is of profound importance to this community, that's housing. Yes. And again, I can get personal for just a minute. My sister shares a place with one other a person, also uh, who's, who's there now, who, had, who has Down syndrome. Before she moved in, the other room in the condo was empty for a year. At the point she moved in, we found out that this woman had been on the waiting list for housing for 15 years. So on the one hand, there was a room that was sitting empty for a year, and on the other, someone who was waiting for 15. We know what the demand is yeah. in communities, states, nationally. What would President Obama and the federal government, if he is reelected, do to address this? Well. President Obama supports programs that support affordable, accessible, and integrated housing for Americans with disabilities. He knows right now there's over 750,000 people with developmental disabilities alone who um, live with aging parents. There's many millions of wheelchair users who find it very difficult to access affordable, accessible housing. He believes in modifying Medicaid's longstanding institutional bias, Frank, that you alluded to just a few moments ago, that currently spends 60% of, 67% of its dollars in long-term care dollars for institutional care, but only 33% of its budget to community-based services. So I think there's a, under money follows the person, 
More than 20,000 people have already transitioned out of institutions, and President Obama has directed a billion dollars toward training, retaining, and employing more direct care workers so that people with disabilities, severe disabilities, can work independently in the community. Now, I think um, he's also, as you may know, extended Money Follows the Person by an additional five years. That's two and a quarter billion dollars more flowing into Money Follows the Person to help even more people integrate into the community. But, you know, we know that there's still millions of people trapped in nursing homes. We know that, it's, that certain cities are very expensive to live in. Um, and that's going to be, those are, we need to work with landlords. We need to work with others to, to try to create more affordable, accessible housing. So it's, it's a combination of all the programs I've, I've just mentioned above, together with working in the private sector. And the, how can these things be done given the the financial pressures, the fiscal pressures that he and anybody appropriating any money in any direction are going to well, face. Well, we can't afford years. not to do it. We can't afford not to do it because I think that we know, we know that it costs less to, to, we've seen the studies, to have somebody living in their community with support costs less than, than uh, uh, somebody institutionalized in a nursing home. So we need to figure out a way, okay, uh, even appeal to people on purely economic terms, okay? And, but I think that in terms of right now, we, you know, the Americans with Disabilities Act is over 20 years old. P places like many cities here in Ohio, for example, that have, you know, are older cities, okay? There are, I think the housing market is very dependent ge geographically. You, the, states like this may have a harder time with a lot of these same issues than, for example, communities down in Florida or some of the newer areas who've been able to incorporate universal design in their city planning processes. Do you see what I'm saying? So I don't have a ma magic bu bullet, but I, what I'm saying is that I think that uh, the central concept of, of President Obama's plan is that finding this money needs to be done in a fair and equitable way, okay? That is what it's all about. And you are not, pledging on behalf of him here today that he will do that in a second term, regardless of... Not I regardless, all you have to do, I'm not making any promises, Frank. I'm just saying look at his record. <laughs> look at his I, record. I'm just trying to establish the record right now. So. Uh, look at his... Uh, and and I, think, I think that the reason why we need to reelect Barack Obama is because we need to, we need to make sure that more, that more money flows into money follows the person. We need to make sure that Medicaid programs are not block granted because basically what that means, when you, say, when you hear the word block grant, you should automatically think of the word cap, okay, because that's basically what's happening. Yes, it saves money in Washington, D.C. You know how it does it, right? It caps the amount of money that the federal government will send to the state, say that's it, you decide, okay? Doesn't adjust for inflation? doesn't adjust for all the baby boomers who were retiring, doesn't adjust for population growth and the other stresses that are going on in states. So I think that's what's going to happen. And I think that if we want more affordable, accessible housing, you know, we're, our country is going to have to make the investment to make sure that that happens. But what are we going to do? You know, people are going to either be prisoners or be able to live in a community that's open and accessible to everyone in our society. And I think that's the kind of community that we want.